Hello friends, this is N. S. Rajanish, Assistant Professor of English, Government Degree College, Gajbel. Today, I am going to share with you my views on one of the most essential uh, skills of writing, writing in English, that is uh, about uh, how to summarize an exercise in summarizing, compression, abridgment, abstracting and condensation, that is uh, in a single word, if we put it in a nutshell, the, an exercise in compression, summarizing, abridgment, abstracting and condensation is, what is it? Can you make a wild guess? Yes, it is nothing but pre-si. What is it? It is pre-si, P-R-E-C-I-S, pre-si. It is also called uh, epitome, epitome not epitome, some people tend to say it, pronounce it like uh, epitome. It is not epitome, but epitome. It also means a short summary of a text or speech. You might observe in this word presi, as it is a French word, we pronounce it is as presi, S, the final S is silent. In French, the, the convention is that the last uh, final S, if not uh, uh, succeeded by a vowel sound, it is silent, just like uh, debris, d e b r i s, debris, c h a s s i s, chassis, like this. So, this presi, which is a French word, means precise, concise, sharp. This uh, has its roots in a Latin word precises, precises, precises is to cut off. This is also uh, this also means abridgment, uh, contraction, compression. This uh, generally we see this term, we come across this activity called phrase in academic examinations, not only in academic examinations, but also in competitive examinations such as public service commission examinations, uh, especially uh, you know union public service commission civil services main mains exam, there is a paper on English in which uh, you find presi, a, presi, a passage is given and uh, you are expected to presi it, the other two being essay writing and comprehension. So, presi is an important task and it is also, it has also been prescribed in so many universities and uh, plus two level, even in school level it is prescribed presi. Oxford English Dictionary says, Presi is a summary of a, a summary or abstract of a text or speech. Even a text can be Presi'd, that is what Oxford English Dictionary defines a, a Presi as. And a popular uh, grammarian linguist uh, called Richard Palmer in, in his 1996 book, uh, Brain Train, in, in the chapter called uh, Creative Dueling, he says that Presi is a ruthless business. You see, presi is a, use, a ruthless business. It's uh, in most academic presi tasks, you are given an exact and mandatory word limit. In a very real sense, every word counts. So, the objective of writing a presi, asking you to write a presi, is that if you if you can express the gist of the passage in a nutshell with the economy of words. The objective or aim of giving a text, giving a test in Presi in examinations is that they want to test us whether we can understand a text, of course, obviously in English, a text and uh, whether we can understand what is the gist and what, I, what uh, is uh, the topic that is talked about, what is the topic that is discussed in the, in the text and uh, finally, if we can write uh, the gist, gist of the text uh, in our own words, mind you, in our own words. Generally, generally a text, uh, the, the words used in a text uh, should not be, better not be used in a presi, better we use our own words unless, and un, unless the words in the text are essential without which we cannot convey the same meaning, uh, we, we use the word. All these things, what, whether understanding a text or whether we can understand the gist, the gist of the text or if we can write uh, in our own language, all these things in a nutshell 
they mean to test whether we know and we can use the language. My dear friends, knowing a language is different from being able to use it. Most of the students generally they know about the language, but they do not know unfortunately. Maybe there should be a change in the, t in the teaching methods in order to equip the, the students to know, to make them master how to use the language rather than giving them the knowledge about the knowledge about the language. So, uses. What are the uses of a pricey? Generally, students tend to read uh, very superficially a periphery, peripheral uh, study. They do, in fact, they do not study. They just read on without uh, trying to catch or grasp the meaning, the inner meaning of the text. In such uh, situations, it improves concentration. It uh, requires more attention and concentration. This activity or task of uh, pricey writing improves in concentration. And it also improves writing skills because whatever we we have uh, observed, we have noted down from the text. We have to write in our own language without any without any errors, um, without any faults, without any mistakes. We have to write and in a coher coherent manner. Thus, it improves writing skills as well. And uh, one of the important aspects of triplicity writing is choosing words carefully. My dear friends, words are so powerful that a word can, it can uh, make a world or even break it. Some, some linguist says that a word has the power of an atom bomb. See, so therefore, we should, we should be able to use a specific precise word to meet our ex expression, to suit our expression. And uh, the more, the greater our vocabulary, the more precise our expression and so therefore, we should have a wide vocabulary and precise and concise uh, use of vocabulary. And uh, the other use of uh, pricey writing is sequencing. We arrange the points, all the points in the text in, in a logical order and each, there should be coherence and uh, the sequence of the, all the points. Uh, also is is learnt in this um, activity called pricey writing sequence at the points in a logical and concise manner precise concise brief and logical manner and how how to do this pricey writing as we all know pricey writing is not any creative writing what we are expected to do in pricey writing is that we are given a topic, we are given a passage or text of about uh, one, two or more than two paragraphs. And what we are expected to do is that just to report the gist, gist of the text in our own words. So, therefore, it is purposeful as some other teacher, I heard some other teacher saying that it is of it has only administrative purpose. Therefore, we have to cut down all the peripheral, peripheral um, decorations, beautification of language with figures of speech, figurative language, idioms and phrases. We strip off all these things which form the flab which are not essential for conveying the thought of the writer. Next one is quotations. Quotations also are used to uh, to augment or to support the ideas of the author. Therefore, they, they are of uh, not much use in writing a precy. We avoid quotations as well. And the other thing is statistics, statistics and examples. For example, statistics, if uh, we read uh, an essay on road accidents, road accidents in so and so year were so many and 2016, 17 were so many, 17, 18 were so many and in 18 up to till now there are so many. These things we do not uh, mention in, in a pricey. We just simply say, we, we say that the number of accidents, the number of uh, road deaths have increased in so and so, yes, that is what we say. So, therefore, we avoid statistics and also examples. Examples also are used or cited 
in order to support the views, the views of the author and sometimes more than one example are used as in such situations we take only one example and uh, omit the other examples. And the next one is exclamation, exclamation is a sudden feeling of the author and uh, also rhetorical questions. Rhetorical question is a question that which does not require an answer. For example, in fact it is a statement in the form of a question. For example, Shakespeare said, do we not, if, if, we prick, if you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? That means that we, we bleed if you prick us and we laugh if you tickle us. And at the same time, P. B. Shelley's uh, famous uh, word uh, we see, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? Is he asking us a question? No. He says that if winter comes, it, definite, it is definitely followed by spring. So, rhetorical questions are only decorative, ornamental and uh, they beautify uh, the uh, structure, they beautify the, the content of the subject or text. Therefore, we avoid all these uh, expressions, extraneous things. And caution. My dear friends, while reading a text, we should keep in mind that the views mentioned are of the author, author's own personal feelings about a subject and he has a right to have his own feeling and own opinion about something. Therefore, you cannot say the author is right or wrong. Sometimes uh, some author might, uh, might uh, support a uh, dowry system some author might support uh, corruption, so on and so forth. In such situations, we do not, you do not have any right to be judgmental and say that this is right or this is wrong. And it, at the same time, you, you cannot conclude, uh, we, you cannot make conclusions, you cannot uh, draw conclusions on the text. What you want, have to do is just to present what the author has said, that's all. No comments and criticism, that is what we have just observed. And be loyal, be loyal to the passage. Being loyal to the passage means sometimes in a text um, you, you might uh, be knowing more about the, the content, the, the theme in which the writer has uh, written, but you do not find that information, piece of information in the passage in such situations you cannot add anything to the text. You just confine yourself, that is be loyal to the passage or the text given to you. And use third person narrative. Sometimes the author says, I, I think that lay otherwise, uh, in my view this is so and so. We, what we say, what we report is that the author th says, the author feels, the author thinks so and so, such and such. That's all. We, that is why we use, therefore we use a third person narrative and we always use reported speech, we avoid the direct speech. You do not see any double inverted commas in Prezi writing. And next one is do not paraphrase. Paraphrasing is similar to Prezi writing but is it is completely a different task, different uh, activity, different exercise, in the sense that a paraphrase tells the same thing. Every sentence is paraphrased, and but in different words. Sometimes a paraf paraphrase may be longer than the original text. If the original text is a, in 100 words, the paraphrase might also be in more than 100, 100 uh, words. Therefore, paraphrasing is different and do not uh, ever, never paraphrase. And the more, one of the most important questions, doubts about Prezi writing is how long a Prezi should be? A Prezi should be strictly, strictly, invariably one third of the original text. If uh, say the text has 300 words, the Prezi should not exceed 100. Okay, plus plus or uh, one or two words plus or minus doesn't make much difference, but it should strictly be one third of the original text. 
one day one of my one of my students who is uh, intelligent rather over intelligent and a mischievous guy he was he came to me running and he asked me sir why to break our heads why to bother about so many things sir you just pick up pick out the first sentence from the passage you leave the second and third and you pick up the fourth you leave the fifth and sixth you pick up the seventh one like this you you he, you pick up every third sentence and write a pressy why bother about all these things no no my dear friends this is a foul play students studious and hard working students like you cannot resort to such silly mischievous foul foul things this is a ma malpractice if you cut down like this even your examiner will cut down his marks and he, he, you he might uh, given you about even uh, zero therefore be be careful about uh, uh, the length of the passage that is the prese so sequence how do we write what are the steps that are followed at the outset we have mentioned that the exercise in prezi prezi writing is not a creative work the job is you read the text written by the author and uh, reread it if possible if required and present it in your own words that is what is expected by you in the task of writing a prezi firstly firstly you go through the text you before you read it you skim it skimming is just passing on reading it at a, at a glance having a bird's eye view just uh, right uh, reading it superficially peripherally just in order to know what he is uh, talking about for example there is a passage on uh, it goes like this Mahatma Gandhi was born in uh, 18, 1869 in Porbandar, Gujarat. He he went to South. He studied law, and he went to South Africa, and there he opened a school for the blacks, for the um, or deprived people, oppressed people there, and he the he named the school as Tolstoy Farm, so on, so on, and so forth. what is he talking about he is talking is he talking about the school that gandhi opened in uh, south africa or if we, we are talking about gandhi we are just he is just talking about gandhi so you make out you make out what the topic what the text is talking about what is the gist of the topic the gist of the text this you can achieve only when you go through the text read it reread it twice three times if required in order to get the grasp the summary gist of the sometimes people complain students complain sir what if i can't understand one sentence or one word uh, an important word in in a sentence no problem skip it what is the worry anyway you have to you have to write it cut it cut it short to one third of the length of the original don't worry sometimes we have to know the tricks of the trade and uh, the next uh, step is in the sequence is understand what is talked about what is talked about generally in the the theme of the the theme of the text is uh, stated in the first or second one or two sentences at the beginning first sentence itself forms the basis of the passage generally and understand the gist gist is a uh, summary the crux of the matter and uh, identify important points as you go on reading some you you find some points uh, to be important this at this juncture you should be very judgmental your uh, your capacity of uh, judging which is right which is interesting which is information which is figurative thing you have to you have to be very discernible we uh, you have to be very judicious in judgmental in choosing this so identify the important points and underline them with a pencil or uh, and even you can write them you can write them in the rough draft next one is restate in your own words mind you mind dear my dear friends when we write a prese we sell we very rarely use the words used by the author 
we use our own words and simple words you should not be the text should not be your uh, press should not be very flowery very decorative very high flute in high flown language you do not you should not use it should be very fluid it should be very simple subtle and easy to understand so with th keeping this in mind you prepare a rough draft and that too in paragraphs not in points point wise this is not note making of course there are some similarities between note making and pressy writing this is different from note making therefore we write a pressy in paragraphs sometimes in more than one paragraph if there is a slight change in the shift uh, in the topic or in the mode or the theme of this um, uh, of the topic in a sen in a paragraph you change the paragraph and you leave us one line to demark for as a demarcation that there is a change in the mood or or observation or standpoint then review whatever you have written you review it whether all the ideas have been carried forward rightly in your pressy you make a review of it and count the words most important things because there is a limit there is an economy of words and words make a difference in pressy therefore count the words and uh, we have we have also observed that we have already observed that in a pressy the length of the pressy should not exceed one third of the original text count the words and if the number of words is more more than the required one one third of the original text you delete or if it short uh, it it falls short of some words you can add augment uh, augment it with uh, some other new new words mind you your own words and then prepare the fair draft we have all, always uh, we, have, we have almost reached the conclusion in writing a pressy the sequence of writing a pressy prepare the fair draft and then give an appropriate title this is this also carries marks in a in a test give an appropriate title you should it should be suitable and based on the theme of the text and uh, it the title should indicate the gist the gist of the text and we all know that uh, generally titles are made of uh, phrases just words and phrases we do not we rarely find we rarely see a verb in a in the title of a title of an essay for example science and society gender bias what clothes say okay what clothes say there is a verb and um, you know, what else uh, knowledge and wisdom urban chaos all these are purely phrases we all know the difference between a phrase and clause we discuss it later and the the title should be appropriate and based on the central idea that is the theme of the theme of the text and now the task of how to reduce this is all a reduction process all these days these days lately we see uh, slimming centers slimming operations what do they do in slimming slimming operations they cut off all the flab all the flat and they, they reduce you to the actual actual muscular muscular uh, structure that is what we have to do in pressy writing that is what we are expected to do well, mind you my dear friends are as richard uh, richard palmer said we should be like vulture like vulture like in our ability to tear a sentence into its bones into its bones of course we lose uh, the subtlety and gentility of uh, the original text but there is no other way because we are writing a pressy with a purpose just to state the gist of the text therefore there is no other way except reducing a clause into a phrase clause and a phrase you know the difference phrase is a group of words which does not have a verb which does not have a subject and verb and a clause is uh, a group of words which has a verb and also a subject and a verb that is the difference of a clause 
and a phrase. We, re we reduce a clause into a phrase. For example, when the sun was shining in the eastern horizon, when the sun was rising in the eastern horizon, for this we can use a, a single phrase, small phrase like at dawn or at sunrise. See, when the sun was rising in the eastern horizon, just to at sunrise. What is the, the pr previous sentence is? That is nothing but a circumlocution. Circumlocution is a roundabout way of telling uh, facts or uh, statements. At dawn, at sunrise, what is the opposite of dawn? Opposite of dawn is dusk, that is sunset time. And the second one is a long phrase into one word. We tend to say, people tend to say, at this point in time. Why at this point in time? We can say now, now, not at this point in time. Some people also make the mistake of at this point of time. It is not at, at this point of time, my difference. It is at this point in time, in time, that is now. And we also say uh, someone has passed on from this earth. What is this? What does this that mean? That he died. What does, why does he use so many words, passed on from this earth? This is also a figure of figurative use of language. This is called, uh, what is the, uh, what is the euphemism? This is called euphemism, uh, a literary term, a figurative uh, figure of speech that is telling a bitter, bitter truth in a sweet way. Dying is called passing away. And the third thing is a clause into a word. We reduce a clause into reduce a clause into a word. For example, that which cannot be easily read. Read with reference to writing. It is used with reference to light, writing. That is illegible. Illegible, not illegible. Illegible. That which cannot be easily read. And that which cannot be easily erased. That which which cannot be easily erased is indelible. Indelible. We know we are going elections or around the corner in the state, uh, and as a, a symbol, as a, a mark of you were casting vote, they they put uh, they, what they put a mark, uh, an indelible indelible mark on your finger when you cast your vote. That is indelible. That is which cannot be erased easily. We are reminded of another similar word, indelible and inedible. When we, we we see on some tankers, inedible. Inedible is that which is not suitable for consumption, that which is not suitable for eating, that is inedible. And long catalogues into general, generic terms, generic terms. For example, we bought pencils, pens, paper, pins, paper weights, ink, clips, erasers and tags. What are these things? Pen, paper, pins, paper weights, ink, clips, eraser. These all come un under the word stationery. We can say, we just can say, we bought stationery. You Remember, you notice this word stationery. Stationery is uh, related to these things: pens, pencils, paper. There is also such a similar word, stationery. Stationery that is static, which does not move. This is stationery. Stationery. And another example: I watched the movie with my father, mother, wife, and daughter. Father, mother, wife and daughter. What do all these people make? They make a family. So, I watch the movie with my family. This is how we, we reduce long catalogs into generic terms. And we also have to reduce a lengthy and repetitive conversation into a brief report. For example, this I have taken from a te 
textbook prescribed by Usmania University long back when I was in my graduation. It was prepared by the editorial board of the Usmania University. I have borrowed this example from that book. Morrill said to Candida, I have nothing to offer you but my strength for your defense, my honesty for your surety and my ability and industry for your livelihood. Livelihood and my authority and position for your dignity. That is all it becomes a man to offer a woman. See, such a long, uh, long sentence, such a long uh, statement about what a man can, could offer to a woman. This we can change, reduce into, moral said to Candida that he would offer her all that a man could offer to a woman. I repeat, Morrill told Candida that he would offer all, her all that a man could offer to a woman. I think this offer is redundant here, redundant here. Therefore, we can remove this, even this offer and we can say Morrill told Candida that he would offer her all that a man could do to a woman. And uh, we look at an, uh, an exercise. This is about, uh, we see what, is, what this uh, text is about. The test of a great book is whether we want to read it only once or more than once. Any book which we want to read the second time, even more than we wanted to read it the first time, is really a great book. Every additional reading will help us understand it better and we will find new beauties in it. A book that a person of education and good taste does not care to read more than once is very, very probably not worth much. I, I understand that this paragraph is about books, good books and bad books, what makes a book good and what makes a book bad and this passage has a, is, comprises 86 words. So we have to reduce it into about uh, 27, 28 or at the most 30 words. We can reduce it to a reciprocity like this. The test of a good book. A good book is one to which we turn again and again to discover now, to discover new beauties. If we do not turn to it again, it must be a bad one. It is about 30 words now. Therefore, the, the, the actual text was in about 86 words and this we reduced it to 30 words. Two or three words more or less does not make any much difference. Therefore, we pass on to the next exercise. This exercise is about, uh, we see, superstitions. Nearly all superstitions are concerned with luck. Good luck is associated with black cat, horseshoes, the finding of a pin, the three penny bit in the Christmas pudding, the old shoe flung at a wedding party, it is how many examples are given? Five examples. Ill luck, that is bad luck, ill luck is associated with the howling of dogs, the spilling of salt, the crossing of knives, sitting down in third into a table, meeting a cross-eyed uh, woman, walking under a ladder, the falling of a picture from the wall, the breaking of a mirror, and scores of other things. He has given uh, eight examples, eight examples for ill luck. What I, what I find, what I feel this passage is about is uh, about superstitions and also good luck and bad luck. This passage has 86, one, 86 words in it. I think uh, we can delete so many examples in the second sentence. He has given five, five examples uh, for good luck and uh, in the third sentence he has given eight examples for Ill, Ill luck. We reduce it like this. Most superstitions are related to either good or bad luck. Horseshoes are an example of good luck and uh, Howling of dogs, that of bad luck, that's all. Why should we go on 
uh, increasing the list with examples. So this makes uh, the, the Prezi 25 words, 25 words is good and we, I think this, the heading, the title given to the Prezi also is uh, suitable. This is superstitions and we look at uh, another small exercise. What manner of man was Napoleon then? Was he one of the great ones of the earth? The man of destiny as he was called? A mighty hero and one who helped in freeing humanity from its many burdens? Or was he, as H.G. Wells and some others say, a mere adventurer and wrecker who did great injury to Europe and civilization? What do you find? What do you think this passage is about? Is this about uh, edgy wells or humanity or burdens of life or European civilization? No, this is about Napoleon and uh, what people think about what are the views of people about uh, Napoleon, what are the observations of uh, other people about Napoleon. This passage has 61 words. And we reduce it like this. There are contradictory opinions on Napoleon. Some considered him a great liberator, while others like H.G. Wells thought he ruined European civilization. So there are contradictory opinions. See, some people say he is a liberator, some, see, some people think that he is a he has ruined the European civilization. Therefore, we, we give the topic sentence as uh, there are contradictory opinions on Napoleon. And uh, I think this title is a suitable, appropriate Napoleon, savior or raker. This Prezi has 21 words, whereas the actual text had uh, how many words? 61 words has become 21 words now. And now it is time to have a bird's eye view or uh, what we have done so far, we have to signpost now. How to do, how to do this process, this task of this exercise of summarizing, abridgment, contraction, condensation, mm, all this thing in a sequence. We have a recap of what we have discussed so far. First one is read the text. First skimming, reread it and reread it if required. If you are not sure about what he is talking about in the text, <coughs> and understand what is talked about. That is uh, the gist of the passage. That is the crux of the passage. Of course, it is a difficult task to reduce it the a long document to its essential it is a tough tough task and understanding also is not uh, an easy task understanding depends uh, on your vocabulary and you, you in your capacity of comprehension in the language it depends on so many factors and understanding the gist what is the gist of the passage the text and identify important points as we have uh, discussed already and identify, you can make note, you write down the points as they are, they are found in the original text and uh, later restate in your own words, in your own words that does not mean that in any, any other language, in your own words is in simple English, basic English, it should be, uh, your English should be very fluid, very fluent and very um, clear, you should have a clarity and uh, it should read like, it should read uh, without any difficulty. And a rough draft is uh, prepared. This is only a step in the preparation of Prezi writing. And then we have a review, a review of whatever has been done in the, in the Prezi, whether all the points, where, whether all the items, whether all the observations of the author 
mentioned in the passage have been carried forward in your prissy. You have to make it and mind you, my dear, my dear friends, there should not be repetition and the prissy should look like an original and authentic text as a whole, as a new whole. Uh, why, uh, the reader should not feel that he has he is missing something in the prissy and um, count the words because this prissy writing is uh, what we have already noticed that is a slimming operation. We cut down all the extraneous extra figurative beautification, beautification and ornamentation of language like figures of speech idioms and phrases, rhetorics, exclamation, all these things we have to, uh, we have to remove. Therefore, uh, counting the words is important. If the words are more than required uh, number of words, if they are more than one third of the words, um, you have to cut them down, cut them down and uh, if they are uh, less than the stipulated word limit, you can add on, you, you can add on some other point you feel missed out and you feel that it should have been there and um, of course add or delete words if required because as we have we have already observed that words are words have are very potential they are very sharp they have uh, the the power of making a nation making a world a world can make a world and even it can break a world therefore you can you should know the subtlety nuances of words and use them very carefully because uh, your understanding better understanding depends on the words you use and it is better that you are not misunderstood than you are not understood therefore be careful while using the words as far as possible use the simple simplest words basic words which you find in Michael West, Michael West uh, basic word list, it is better to use such words so that every can, everyone who reads, who reads the prissy can understand it thoroughly. And pre prepare the fair draft, while preparing the fair draft, you look into the text once again and uh, you ensure that no repetitions no examples, no, not so many, too many examples and no grammar errors. And finally, last but not the least, give an appropriate title. We have already noticed, observed that the title of the prissy is purely, should purely be based on the topic of the, or the gist, gist of the text it should not be anything else. And um, how is it useful? How is prissy writing useful in our daily lives? For example, we watch a movie and our friends ask us what is the story, story, what is the theme of the uh, theme of the movie? Do we, do we take three hours time or two hours time to narrate the story? No, we cut down all the extraneous, all the ornamentation, beautification, of the movie, all the graphics we do, we do not narrate. Therefore, keeping all this in view, give a, an appropriate uh, title and you finish your pressy writing. This is what is, uh, what is all about a pressy writing and uh, wish you all a success. Success is dependent on effort and hard work. Happy learning. Thank you.